Hello, everybody, and welcome to this IWC Network exclusive. My name is Nick Lendl, and my guest today is the current talk of the wrestling business. He's the newest signee to All Elite Wrestling. But before he was elite, he was IWC. Uh, I'm joined by Wardlow, man. Thank you so much for your time, and thank, uh, you. thank you for walking us through this journey that uh, is actually just starting off. Yeah, it's wild to think that my life's just beginning. Well, uh, obviously, congrats on uh, signing with AEW. We'll get to that as we move on. I want to start right from the beginning. What was it like growing up, uh, Little Wardlow? Little Wardlow. Um, well, I was most definitely a fan of professional wrestling since I can remember. Um, it was guys like Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect that really sucked me in and uh, captivated me at an early age. Um, but I was always, as a little kid, I was always wrestling, always active, always uh, doing anything athletic, any sport. Um, but mostly it consisted of wrestling pillows. <laughs> so uh, you said you played sports. Uh, what, what sports did you play through high school, uh, college, whatever, you know, the, the level you got to? Um, growing up, it was basketball, baseball, football. Um, basketball, I still love playing to this day. Um, but I really didn't do much in high school. I had to work um, after school every day in high school. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to play sports in high school. So was your, uh, your ultimate goal always to be a pro wrestler? Did you ever have any um, thought of being a, a pro basketball player at some point? Or was, it always, was wrestling always the end game? Yeah, no, I knew <laughs> the NBA wasn't an option. But um, yeah, no, my only goal, my only plan in life was always to be a professional. Okay, so when you graduate, you, you get a little older. When did you decide, you know what, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a pro wrestler. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase my dream. Well, to be 100% honest, um, I, I got a late start. Uh, you know, life had other plans for me. And, you know, I got involved with, uh, you know, a bad crowd. And I was making really good money after school. So I think I maybe got a little comfortable. And... When it comes to professional wrestling, you can't be comfortable. You can't get comfortable. You can't get off track for even a moment. And for a number of years, you know, I went down uh, a different path. And it took me a long time to finally get my life back and get back on track. And then uh, finally I was, I didn't even know independent wrestling existed. You know, in my mind, you know, this was before you could go on the internet and sign up to do a tryout. Like, Absolutely. That yeah. didn't exist. You know, so I didn't even know how to get into wrestling. And so I started working out again and, you know, started getting on track. And I went to a wrestling show in Cleveland just to kind of, you know, get the feels again. And there was a guy handing out flyers. And I look at this flyer and it said live pro wrestling in Cleveland. I'm like, what is this? It's like some wrestling show. And then on the back, it said train at our school. And I was like, what? There's a wrestling school in Cleveland? Like, that's only 45 minutes right away. There, yeah. So uh, I remember the next day I called him and left a voicemail. And uh, the rest is history. I ended up going and doing a little tryout and puked three times that day, but <laughs> never gave up. Well, what was it? Obviously, you're from Cleveland. Obviously, you said you started your training in Cleveland. What was it that brought you from Cleveland to Pittsburgh and started your training at the ICWA? Um, Matt Justice. Okay. Um, he kind of took me under his wing and was helping me train. And then he took me on the road with him because he was wrestling for IWC. So I went with him just to meet people and check it out. Networking. And, yeah. Right? <laughs> and uh, shook some hands that day, and they invited me back to the next show, and I've uh, been there ever since. So are there any um, any names that we would know that, that you trained with, or anybody who st still wrestles on the local scene that we would know that you were training with when you started? Um, I know Derek Direction was around. Okay. Um, a couple of the guys I started with have quit, though. Um. You know, a lot of people in the business, if they don't get fame right away or within the first year or two, they're like, all right, I'm out. Takes a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes it takes, it takes a minute. That's, that's what this whole, this whole interview, the purpose of this whole interview, you know, you're signed with AEW, 
you know, obviously huge things in your future, but we're talking about what it takes to get there. You know, you just don't wake up one day big and I'm going to be a wrestler and you're signed like that. You know, that's what we're going through all this, all this, uh, this journey, like we said at the beginning. So you're, you're training, um, IWC Cleveland. You, you talked to Matt Justice, meet some people here in Pittsburgh. Talk me through your, your debut, your, your first match, your first pro wrestling match. What was that like for, oh, you know, eight year old you to actually go through a curtain and step through the ropes to a real one on one wrestling match? Or was it even a one on one match? It, yeah, it was. So my first match was for Matt Justice, his promotion, and I wrestled Nikki Valentino. Okay. And it's such a unique experience, your first match. The feeling you have is the same feeling you get every single time you go out there. The, the very first match to tonight, I will have the same exact feeling tonight. Um, but I went out there and everything went as smooth as can be. Everything went as planned. But then you come backstage and it's like, it all happens so quickly. It's like you black out. And I just remember sitting there and I didn't know how to feel. Like, it's so hard. Yeah, they tell you to soak in the moment and everything, but it's so hard to do that when you, you know, you have all that, you know, adrenaline running through you and then you're trying to remember what's going on in the match. And yeah, it's a lot. I, well, I can and imagine. that's what it is. There's so much adrenaline leading up to it. And then in a flash, it's over. And you're left sitting there going like, what just happened? Like, mm -hmm. was that good? Was it bad? Was it okay? Like, was everything all right? Like, I don't even know what just happened. And I just, I really, I sat there for so long, just, I just thinking and actually one of the coolest moments in my career uh, Matt Cross was in attendance okay and that's somebody I watched growing up and he came up to me and he asked me how long I'd been working and I was like that was my first match and he was like no way that's the, one of the biggest compliment you could get yeah, right? he's yeah. like I would have thought you'd been working for 10 years wow and I, I, that was like that made me feel so good because he doesn't have to say that Right. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't have to go out of his way to say that. You know, if he if he tells you that, he really means it. Because someone, yes. you know, he like him, he does not have to say that. You're right. So, I, I totally get that. Yeah, so that uh, that brought me from, like, this weird feeling to a very much high. Well, you, you, you start off here. You're early in your career. Uh, when I started coming around IWC, it's just whenever you had formed the alliance with Justin Labar. And that's really when, you know, you started coming into your own and, you know, this Wardlow character. Talk me through um, being in the locker room with Justin Labar, who obviously uh, has ties to a lot of different wrestling companies, has been around the block. Um, how was it to have someone like that in your corner kind of, um, I don't want to say helping you, but kind of guiding you through things that you may have not, and the little nuances, you know what I mean? What was it like to be with Justin Labar for those number of years? I'll always be very appreciative of him. Um, you know, we were paired up, like you said, very early on in my career when I was still, you know, I was kind of thrown in with the Sharks. And, uh, you know, he kind of took me under his wing and guided me with things and even things that just like social media. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have a Twitter or anything like that. And, you know, he kind of gave me pointers like you, you need to do You don't realize this. how and important some of that stuff is until, absolutely. yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, you know, he most definitely guided me and gave me a lot of good um, advice and knowledge and made things very easy mm -hmm. as I was getting comfortable. And uh, he most definitely helped in a major way. Well, uh, through your alliance with Justin Labar, you were elevated higher and higher on the card and eventually became a mainstay in main events here in IWC and eventually uh, a couple times over became the IWC World Heavyweight Champion. What was it like the night you found out that you were going to become IWC World Champion for the first time? Oh man, it wasn't supposed to happen when it happened. Um, DJ Z, um, who I love, he's such a phenomenal person and somebody who's helped me tremendously in my career. Um, he, unfortunately, he was our champion and he got injured. And I just, I remember getting a message and they're like, hey, we, we're gonna put the title on you. And I was like, I'm in my bedroom like yeah. freaking yep. out. I'm like, no way, I'm like, this isn't supposed to be happening. And it was just totally out of the blue. And uh, I just, I was very, honored that collectively 
they decided to go with me, mm -hmm. who I was clearly still trying to develop myself, still very green at the time, you know, but they uh, put their trust in me yeah. to be that guy. Oh, that's such a good feeling to have that, that faith instilled upon you whenever, like you said, you, you thought yourself, I'm still developing into this character, I'm not where I could be, but they're still having the trust that I may develop. And you, you absolutely did. Um, and eventually, you know, you broke away from the bar. Uh, up until this point, at least in IWC, you were always a uh, heel, bad guy, whatever you want to say. And uh, through your relationship dissolving with Justin LaBar, you became, uh, what they call face, a good guy. Uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the fans booing you? Does that give you a little more fire? Or do you like coming through the curtain and everyone, you know, being excited to see you and the little kids holding out their hands? What, what do you prefer? I prefer to just be me, which... I think there's no real distinction of one or the other. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just me, and some people hate me, some people love me. Um, there is an odd satisfaction in making people hate you. <laughs> and, like, just being able to drive people uh -huh. out of their minds. But, um, and, and I prefer working that way. Okay. I guess I can easily make people hate me, and that's fun for me. But there is no feeling like a crowd, an entire crowd of chanting your name. That is got to be one of the most unique feelings in the whole entire world. Oh, absolutely. I bet. So I'm not mad when they do like <laughs> me. <laughs> well, at this time, you, you break away from the bar. Uh, the fans are getting behind you. And it was just about this time where you got your WWE tryout. Um, walk me through that. What, what was it like, you know, walking into that performance center in Orlando, getting the news that they, they wanted to, to look at you a little closer? You know, that's that feeling also where you said you, they have that trust in you. Well, now this is the biggest company in the world, and they want to see you. You know, walk me through the, the WWE tryout, man. What was that like at the performance center? Well, you always see those pictures of people standing there, you know, with the performance <laughs> logo behind them. And, Every time you see it, and like especially people you know, you're like, oh man, I can't wait for that. I want that. I want that. So walking in there was super surreal. I mean, I had a permanent smile on my face for three days. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very exciting to be there. Um, it felt right, and I performed very well, and I worked my ass off those three days. Uh, and it was it was a very fun experience, um, a very unique experience. Now, was the um, the, episode, the Undercover Boss episode with Stephanie McMahon, was that during this tryout? Was that before? Was this after? That's what led to the tryout. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We thought so. It was a little confusion there on when it was, you know, timeline-wise. Right. Um, well, after this is when you started training with Kurt Angle. Yes. Kurt Angle, uh, obviously a Pittsburgh guy, uh, training for his last run in WWE, his last hurrah before he finally retires, and he chooses uh, our school. To, to train at, which is a huge compliment. And I know you were one of the guys that were in there weekly with Kurt Angle, getting him ready for th that WrestleMania season. You know, what was it like training with the best that has ever been produced by Pittsburgh? That's something that still doesn't feel real. That, that was um, thus far one of the coolest things I've done in my career is being able to train personally with him and get in the ring with an absolute legend one of the best to ever do it and go in there and suplex him and take suplexes and just i mean we i mean we didn't hold back mm -hmm. i mean we worked and he would get mad if you held back so uh you know i gave him my all and he gave me his all and man we we just we went wild some of them nights and we would beat the shit out of each other storage for the grandkids right Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it was so much fun. And then when we would be done, you know, it's Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to sit there with us. Absolutely. He'd get his car, train, go home. He would sit there and just BS with us and talk about life and politics and so much random stuff and just give us so much knowledge and just BS with us like we've been best friends forever. He's a phenomenal human being, but uh, I'm very blessed to say that I, I was able to train with him. Oh, absolutely. And for someone uh, that high of magnitude to just make you feel comfortable and just 
you know, train with, you know, go hard, you know, don't, don't let up because I'm Kurt Angle, you know, that's, that's a good feeling the, too. In the first time, the yeah, the My first God. time you get in the ring with them, uh-huh. you're like, I what don't really want to. Oh, I could imagine. Well, so you, you train with Kurt Angle, um, obviously you don't sign with WWE, but they say one door closes, another door opens, uh, 2019, AEW starts up, um, was this something that was a goal of yours when you heard about the launch or were you still, you know, WWE or bust at this point? Um, you know, it's funny in, in December of 18 at an IWC show, I came out at the beginning of the show, took a microphone and said that 2019 was going to be my year, that 2019 would be the year of Wardlow. And it's so bittersweet that AEW all of a sudden launches in 19. And as soon as I saw that, I just believed in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. Yeah. Everybody knew who saw what was happening. They knew, you knew right away it was going to be something monumental, something history making. And I just thought, I want to be a part of that. So initially, I know the, the first time I heard about this, which is, uh, you know, a lot of other people as well, uh, a podcast or an interview with Cody, and he brings up your name. Because, um, I mean, I, I, I work for Ring of Honor a lot of times now. A little guy is more the norm now in pro wrestling, more companies than not, rather than someone, you know, wrestling was built off guys that look like you. And now it looks like, you know, the majority is smaller. And Cody said with AEW, they want to get some big guys. They brought up your name. Had you had you talked to Cody or anybody with AEW at that point, or when he said that, was that the first time you realized, oh my God, these guys are actually looking at me? Um, there were th- some things in motion. Uh, it was it was one of those perfect storms, all the stars aligning. Um, you know, Britt Baker, obviously, mm-hmm. her and I came up together here. You know, so she had mentioned my name, and then Glacier came and uh, did a seminar, and he was impressed by me, and he had mentioned my name. And then I think there was a couple other people um, to credit that kind of threw my name out there, and I think it was just eventually they heard my name so much that they were like, we gotta take a look at this guy. Yeah. Um, so I went down there and met with them, and I mean, it was almost instantly. I mean, they, they watched me work in the ring for a very short period of time, and. They were like, yeah. That's awesome. Well, the, the talks fizzled down a little bit for a week or two, but then on an episode of uh, Being the Elite or whatever it was on YouTube, QT Marshall sitting at the desk and behind him, clear as day, notes that they, you know, for what they need to do before their next show. And right there, Wardlow vignette. Were you already on board at that point? I was still very in the dark. Okay. I, I, the, nothing was guaranteed. Nothing was, everything was still very unsure. And then I'm sitting at home in Plummer sends me that picture yes okay like, why is he sending me a picture of qt so like, plumber saw it before plumber yeah. was the first oh, plumber was the first person like, to let you know okay that's funny he was like wardlow and i was like what like why are you sending me a i picture don't know anything of him? i swear and then i <laughs> looked in the background and saw my name mm-hmm. and i like i screamed i was like what like because i had no idea i was so excited and i i still didn't know until later that night what that meant mm-hmm. so it was very exciting so when when did the pen go to paper? When was this when was this finalized? When were you officially a part of this uh, this new team? Um, just recently. I mean, I've had to keep it secret for quite a while. I mean, it's it's been a few months, but again, it was like a very start off type of thing. Uh-huh. I was still very unsure what direction we were going in or what was really going to happen, but I, I wasn't allowed to talk about it at all. And you don't want to either because you almost don't want to jinx it. Correct. You know? Yes. So what was it like? I mean, obviously, you're working with um, Pittsburgh, Cleveland area, whatever. You're working with the same guys every week. And how hard was it to not tell your friends, like, hey, guys, like, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna be on their, you know, I'm going to be on their show. I'm going to work with them. You know, how hard was it to just keep your mouth shut, you know, and, and, and not jinx yourself, like we say, you know? Yeah, there, there's a few guys, you know, guys that you're close with that mm-hmm. you want to be able to tell. Of but that you trust. Yeah. Well, now, on the flip side of that, uh, I don't want to bring up a sensitive subject. If this is something you don't want to talk about, we'll move right along. Uh, Your mom. Mm -hmm. Uh, Every event that I've been on with you, 
your mom has been in the crowd. She has a Wardlow shirt. Uh, she's your number one fan. What was it like to tell your mom, I have a contract, mom. I'm going to do this. I did it. See Take that, me through that moment. See, that's funny. When, um, when they initially told me, like, they were bringing me on board, uh, the next day QT was like, he was like, hey, did you tell your mom yet? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no. And he's like, why not? And I'm like, dude, to be 100% honest, I was like, I've had nothing but disappointment. Like, I can't give her any more mm-hmm. news that's not, I'm like, is this for real? Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, man, this is for real. So I was like, all right, then I'll tell her. And I was able to call her and, oh, my gosh. She really is my number one fan, always has been, always will be. And find, being able to tell her, like, I made it, this is happening, was just finally, finally I could tell her. Mm-hmm. And, and it was a very happy moment for both of us. Yeah, I, I could only imagine. So you're uh, uh, watching the paper, or, or were you there? Were you there whenever your, your vignette aired? Were you backstage? I was there. Okay, so... Uh, when did when did it set in? Like you know, this this is real. Was was it when you saw your vignette air during the pay per view? Was it when you were backstage? Uh, when did it set it settle in, man? Because I know, like you said, you know that adrenaline when you go through the curtain. Sometimes you don't even realize. Well, I just had a match or whatever. How long did it take for you to kind of, okay, yeah, this is what I'm doing now. I'm it's still not yet. <laughs> no, not at all. I watched it and I was just like. Again, it's such a unique feeling like you're like excited, but there's like there's all this pressure, but there's pressure that's been lifted. It's all this mix of emotions that you've just never experienced before. And it's like, is this real? And it still hasn't hit me that it's real. And I I don't think it'll hit me until I walk out on that stage for the first time. And it's just like things things that you haven't even thought about yet. You're thinking, wow, I just got signed to one of the biggest wrestling companies in the world. I'm going to be on national TV. But you haven't even thought about the little things. You know, Earl Hebner could ref one of your matches. You could be Wardlow versus Chris Jericho could be happening in the very near future. I have thought about that. You know what I mean? One like, thing that I was so mad at myself about for starting so late, JR is never going to call one of my matches. Like, that was a thing I used to just be so mad at myself about because he's the best. Mm-hmm. And to hear him Absolutely. call my match would be amazing. And that's one thing that hit me, like, JR's going to be calling your match. Absolutely. That's mind-blowing to me. Yeah. Absolutely mind-blowing. So let me ask you this. You're obviously a wrestling fan your whole life. When you were little, were you a WWE guy or a WCW guy? Um, it was initially WWE in the early days with, like, Razor Ramon, and like I said, Brett, and Sean, and Mr. Perfect, and those guys. But when WCW started coming along, because on on Monday night, you were always, you you were going back and forth between the channels. So you had your main one, and when that one went to commercial, you would check the other one out. Mm -hmm. For me, it was WCW. And when WCW would go to commercial, I would go see what WWE was doing. So I was very much a WCW guy. So has has that set in yet, that you're going to be on the same network Nitro was on? Yeah, and that is just... It's surreal, right? Totally surreal. You know, like, when did this happen? You know, just like that. And I know you've been been doing this, what, four or five years at least at Mm -hmm. this point. And for a lot of people, it seems like it happened so fast. But for you... Like no man, I've been I've been working these shows and I've been you know traveling for the last five years. You know, it, it wasn't just that easy for you, but um, obviously since I've come into IWC, your progress is unbelievable. We're so happy for you. Uh, congratulations on signing with AEW. Good luck with everything you do in the future. And I think I speak for everybody here when I say thank you uh, from IWC and. We'll see you down the road. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. This is Wardlow. Thank you so much for joining us for this IWC Network exclusive. My name's Nick Lendl, and we'll see you next time.